come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast live and in person. Ooh, Thank God. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> your listening pleasure. Whatever like. God let this happen. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> we're sorry if you listen to the past couple episodes. Uh, we were uh, unexpectedly struck down by yeah. COVID. No, it yeah, went around the group. You, the, yeah. yeah. Like, but also, if you listen to the last three episodes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, that is not how we wanted to do uh-huh. them. Trust me. We were miserable. Yeah. We went down like dominoes. Yeah. Yep. So now we're back in person. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by you. you. <laughs> uh, it's, I was going to point when I do it. It feels right. And, and it's wrong good to find point. that you're making better decisions than last week. Yeah. yeah. I will say. Yeah. I'm really surprised to hear you say that because I was side eyeing you most of the time watching this because I was like, Sean has such a prejudice against found footage movies. He's going to hate this. Like, I was like, bold of the listeners all, to pick depends. a found footage it, movie. It all depends. I'll give things a chance. On this show, you do not have a. I feel like it's three and oh. Like, you didn't like Paranormal Activity 3. Nope. You didn't like The Last Exorcism. Nope. Mm-hmm. That, do you, so, yeah. Uh, again, yeah. I'll give it a chance, but if, yeah. I mean, it's up to the movie. Well, real quick, uh, just in case this is your first episode, at the end of every year, we do a uh, listener's choice round. We let you submit uh, uh, the movies every- that you want. Well, at yeah. the end, we do the yes. selection. Yes. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, four weeks, we're going to watch four movies that you voted on. Last week, we watched Witchery. Thank yes. you very much for that one. Stop that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> it was an Thanks, experience. Man. I'm not mad I watched it. <laughs> So, I mean, we did. We saw some stuff. Yeah. We saw the Hoff. Do we something. saw some things. Well, yeah. We saw the Hoff do very little, but we saw some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, he came off very good in, in comparison to everybody else in that movie. Not like that. that. Mm. I came off <laughs> compared to better than these other do people. You, do you want to keep talking about that movie? Yeah. Let's, I mean, kind of. Don't worry. It's in mailbag. We'll, we'll talk about it in mailbag okay. later. Okay. All right. So yeah. this week uh, is our number third most uh, voted <laughs> for <laughs> movie. Third. I love our number most third. third. Uh, and it is called. Behind the Mask, colon, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. There's no colon on here. You shush. There is. On the IMDb, <laughs> there's looking, a colon. Okay, I'm looking at this. Uh, from the year. 2006. And directed by? Uh, Scott Glosserman. But we... spiritually from the year 1999, it feels like. Uh, Based I don't know. on the low-rise jeans. No, that was the... 2006, bro. Okay. T- like, some of the fa- oh, shit, Ugg boots and a velour skirt. That oh, was very no, 2006. This was it is... solid mid ops. Yeah. Okay. Solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's so ugly. Mm-hmm. You can just, just tell by how ugly it is. Oh. Yeah, like the, the main girl wearing a pink cardigan. Yep. I was like, yeah, there, there was one, we'll the one who was dressed in all brown, the skirt she was wearing. I'm like, I have nightmares. That was a velour that. skirt. Yeah, she was a matching suit. She had yeah, a zip-up yeah. suit and she had Ugg boots with the style it. Of yeah. it. It just reminds yeah. me of bad things. Bad times, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I get like horrible flashback memories seeing that stuff too. And also, I got a horrible flashback. It was for a split second. One of the stoner kids had a brimmed beanie, and I had one of those. And oh, I yeah. had a horrible, I had a horrible oh, yeah. moment of like, oh, I was seen wearing that. Oh, <laughs> and and uh, short sleeve t shirt over long sleeve. Oh, the long sleeve t shirt. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, come yeah. back in this movie. It's yep. coming back at yeah. some point. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, God, <laughs> no. I can't. I lived through it once. I don't want to do it again. Uh, do we, we, we have to bring it back. Do we know the director of this movie? Um, Not really. No? No, because this is very, like, like a lot of found footage movies. It's people you don't know, for the most part, mm-hmm. because it wants first. to be real. Yeah. And it wants oh, to pass yeah. off as, like, a real thing. So if you cast known actors in it, it's obviously not. Well, I looked, right. I looked the director up. Like, this was, was this, I think... He had done shorts. Was this his first feature film? Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't look like he's done a lot since. No. Scott, Scott what? Scott Glosserman. Yeah. Glosserman. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, movie in 2011 called The Truth Below that I've never heard of, and that's it. Yeah, so, so. it doesn't sound like he got like a career out of it. They're always no talking really about did. the, uh, I think the lead actress, um, what's her name, Angela? Angela Go- Gofels? I think she's the most successful. Mm-hmm. The lead actor is Nathan Basil. Yeah, and uh, Colin, watch your mouth, because he has produced 110 episodes of Deadliest Catch, okay? Really? So oh, he, wow. I would say he's successful. <laughs> Oh, okay. I think well, he's doing oh, just fine. Yeah, okay. Are talking about, are talking about Dane Cook's cousin? Is that, yes, is yes. Guy, <laughs> or that, or he, I, I thought he looked like the guy from Train. Yes, he the does. Lead singer All right, from the lead Train. singer from Train. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. Yeah. Pat something, that. Pat. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. the hair. I thought yeah. he was a decent enough actor in oh, no. this, yeah. but... He's, yeah. 
I think he's really good. Yeah, but this. never yeah. got a career. Or he, I, I, I was looking him up because I'm like, well, what do you? And I read an interview with him, and he said that he had stepped away from acting. He was teaching acting. He opened an actor's studio, and he was involved in a lot of reality TV. Now it makes yeah, sense. No, yeah. So. yeah, he didn't say it was Deadliest <laughs> Catch and Storage Wars. Like this man is like a History uh, Channel staple. Okay, <laughs> so Leslie oh, he, Vernon okay. himself is. Uh, Let's the give producer. him some credit. He also produced uh, that Waco documentary series, or that. Oh, so like, Waco American I, Apocalypse. I did watch so that. he did. Yeah. Do some good. Okay. I was like, I actually stuff, did watch that. So I've seen something. So he, <laughs> so he likes the the medium. He likes. Okay, this guy's like this guy's produced a shit ton of reality TV, yeah, like so Jay Leno's like. Garage. Good for him. He's yeah. he's probably okay because I was looking at his acting resume and I was like, oh, there's nothing do down there. After this, so. But <laughs> he Angela he found his niche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Job. Um. So this is, I guess, it's um. So this movie is indebted to Scream. Yeah. Absolutely. <gasps> The, oh, the lead actress was in Home Alone, and I know the role she played. Uh, Lizette Lay- Comaton. Yeah, that's her! <laughs> <laughs> so she has the one iconic she line was, in the movie, yeah. and that's it, yeah. The the Lizette Lay- Lizette Lay- Comaton. Comaton. Yeah, okay. okay, okay, okay gotcha. I don't know what that girl's wow. name is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's but, amazing. Oh my uh, Linny. <laughs> Linny. Yeah, okay. now you will forever know she is Linny from Home Alone. Yeah, uh, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Some of the faces look familiar. Some of them are obviously stunt casting. You've got, well, do we say, so it's like, a, it's a mockumentary mm-hmm. slasher movie? Satire. Slash, satire, dark mm-hmm. comedy. Mm-hmm. You we put a lot on this movie, yeah. And it, uh, like Scream, I guess, is trying to, um, it's like, it's reviewing a, a slasher movie it's at the an same analysis. time. Yeah. Okay. Well, being, well, yeah, while well, being within it. Like Cabin in the Woods, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that closer than Scream? Um, I think, yes. I would say it's a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, definitely, because it's, yeah. they're literally yeah. explaining certain yeah. things. It's literally an analysis of a slasher movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. From, like, the from the point of view of the killer. Of view, from the point of view of the killer. <laughs> yeah. But if if in Cabin in the Woods, if it had not been the, the zombie redneck family, if it had been a, like a different type of killer, it would be this movie. Like, yeah. that right. would have been the movie instead. But yeah, it's I love the, how this formula pops up at like every 10 years, like clockwork. Like, <laughs> we're probably due for another one, like right probably about now. The huh? analysis. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. what, Cabin in the Woods is like 2011. So mm-hmm. we I haven't had so. one since, right? Well, are those like, uh, it's like the postmodern era of mm-hmm. uh, horror movies. Mm-hmm. Right. Have we gone past that now? Or are we still. I mean, it depends <sighs> on what you're. Because I guess you have to have nostalgia for something. Like it depends on your opinion of the recent Scream movies, I suppose. Uh, true. I don't know. I haven't watched it, but maybe It's a Wonderful Knife. I yeah, I haven't was, watched it either. Was kind of. It's uh, totally not as, killer. I don't think it's deep into. Right, totally right. killer is yep, this exact type of movie. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep. So it's Very still low happening. budget version, but it's the same. Idea. Remember the slasher movie? And then we had mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, which we all said on the mm-hmm. end of the year episode, uh, mm-hmm. is like a. Uh, a non-ironic, uh, non-meta slasher right. movie that's mm-hmm. actually out now. So like the film, opposite of this movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So this ca- comes from like an era um, where it still seemed like uh, movies could be discovered like in, in film festivals and then would be picked up for distribution. Right. Mm-hmm. Anchor Bay Entertainment, right, was mm-hmm. making a big uh, swing with DVD. They picked it up, put it out in theaters, I guess, and then had the exclusive release on it. So most of you probably saw it on uh, DVD back in the day. Um, I love Anchor Bay. I salute mm-hmm. them. Man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whatever you happened, you to get some. Where did that money Anchor go? Bay. Like, where did right. that company go? Like, they never really got into s- streaming. I don't know if they were bought out by somebody else or something, or they just like disappeared. You know that um, oh, Anchor bad. Bay sleeved VHS of Halloween is worth like a shit ton of money. Like really? that one specifically, people want it has that white border with the logo on the bottom. Oh, I was gonna yeah. say which one that's they put the it one. out like sixteen. Yeah, times. well, that's <laughs> the valuable one, the white, the one with the white Anchor Bay border. Is that like on the it. most? It like hundred bucks ever. And Evil yes, Dead. Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It seems like I think. Was that Anchor Bay too, or one of those companies mm-hmm. like just kept releasing those movies like every couple of years, a new edition with the yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I have like the double boomstick edition of Army of Darkness, and I'm like, I don't even know what's special about this. I got the <laughs> Book of the Dead, Evil Dead. Yeah. And I'm like, how long is that? Uh, you know, right? Uh, that's gonna last. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so um, I guess how do you describe this movie, or how do you set it up? There's uh, there's a a killer. By the name of Leslie Vernon, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He is a slasher movie. This movie takes place in a world where uh, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and Freddy Krueger, and Chucky, apparently, <laughs> yes. are real. Actually exist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which I, that, like I want a little more explaining like... on the... Ch- yeah. <laughs> they didn't go with Leatherface, which would be much more plausible right. than Chucky. Sure, yeah, they went. Yeah. That's why I was like, 
let's stop here. I have questions. How, how did Chucky happen in this world? Just like it did in the movie? He's a possessed yeah. doll? Voodoo. Okay. Voodoo all, right. all right. So Within this, Voodoo's uh, confirmed real I feel in this like universe. at this point in the movie, I was looking down. So mm. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> did I hear that right? <laughs> well, um, yeah, because I guess, you know, you wonder... Like, how do they know about these characters? They know about, like, the horror movies that we've seen, mm -hmm. but they're supposed to be, you know, there's, like, news footage or something of, like, the Camp Crystal Lake killer, mm -hmm. but they know it's Jason Voorhees or, you know, Freddy Krueger is still haunting people in, in, his, in your dreams. I would dare say they don't know about the horror movies. Well, no, I don't think, no, oh, no, no, not them as horror movies, but horror movies in general. Yeah, it didn't I, seem that way. No, because they don't talk about it, but they're always no. talking about like a visual. This is a visually, this is a motif that you have to do or you have to, you know, it's like, right. it's, it's from the, I mean, there's no real web of reality over this movie, right? right. It's talking about slasher horror mm -hmm. <laughs> movies, yeah. but they were real. Okay. Yeah. So it's in like this the, universe, yeah, it took the movies place. don't exist, but the scenarios are very real. Right. right. And it's like those yeah. scenarios have been studied a lot and they're like, yeah. oh, there's patterns that we follow. Well, yeah. It's like, just like how it's we true crime. It's, yeah. It's yeah. just like how we, if we were, no, this is, if we're going to name like the big four serial killers, right? <laughs> you know, it'd be like what Dahmer, Bundy, BTK, mm -hmm. Gacy, you yeah. know, like, yeah. it's like almost all Midwest people, by the way. They don't Almost fuck all. With us. So yeah, we'll go nuts. Uh, around. But like, just instead of it being those people, it's Freddie, Michael, Jason, Chucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 thrown in there. Yeah, and so there's celebrity cameos in the movie mm -hmm. is uh, to give it like Kane Hodder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean. I feel like it's hard to keep him away from movies at this point, right? He shows up everywhere. He probably just showed up. Yeah, exactly. Like, he was <laughs> probably here filming another movie down the street, walked over to this set, filmed this, and then walked back. <laughs> well, they said it was, so it was filmed in Oregon, and I yeah. guess it was, uh, you know, a pretty low-budget uh, affair. It didn't have distribution when they completed it, but they said that, you know, they sent the the casting people were actually able to get Robert Englund, Zelda Rubenstein, yeah. Scott Wilson, I guess knew Robert Englund mm -hmm. and Robert Englund said, you know, hey, you should take a look at this. And uh, Kane Hodder, you know, showed up <laughs> yep. for a day or whatever. Because yeah. I think they filmed that in Hollywood. Where is that's the in Pasadena. Street house? In Pasadena. It's yeah, really close Pasadena. to the um, Michael Myers house and the Strode house and all those. Well, yeah, yeah, when the, the, all the footage they show at the beginning, that's the place where they were. I've walked all those streets. I was say, yeah, it made me nostalgic. I want to go back. I was like, because <laughs> when you walk down the streets, it feels just like you're in the movie. It looks right. exactly the same. It's crazy. Yeah. We see them how? How do we see the, the scenes of the other movies? Uh, this is all documentary footage. This is found, found yeah, footage movie. Yeah. Out. So who's our documentarian? What are they up to? It's a grad what is her student. name? Jamie. Jamie, yeah. right? Duh. Duh, because this movie's all, all the names are references Wait, to other Jamie. horror no, movies. Is she not Jamie? Right, Who, somebody's Jamie. <laughs> Wait, hold on. We just spent uh, the whole movie watching it, and now you're right. I can't think of. What is her what name? Her, yeah. Taylor, Taylor. 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 Thank you very he much. Tay. Yeah. 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 He calls her Tay. <laughs> Tay. Mm -hmm. So Taylor is a grad school student, mm -hmm. or she works for, I guess, a news w station yeah. because well, it's there's a university a... news station. Okay, oh, there we go. Yeah, she's the yeah. Uh, he says they're grad students. She, yeah, she's a grad yeah. student uh, studying journalism, mm -hmm. yeah. and she is like the anchor for the university. And she's got an exclusive yeah. with the serial killer, I yes, guess, Leslie contact. Vernon, right? Who's going to show her? So Ropes. basically, yeah, they're going to they're going to tag along with him as he prepares like his latest uh, kill, killing spree, which is basically like any, you know, run of the mill slasher uh, mm -hmm. storyline. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see what happens behind the scenes, how he sets it up. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um you ever got you guys ever see a movie called Man Bites Dog? Yeah. Yeah. It was a oh, yeah. Belgian that, movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's a that's brutal a movie, movie yeah. to watch. Yeah, that true. is the much more extreme version of this movie, right? I'd say. Yes. I thought about that while I was I, I'm like, oh, I never made that connection earlier. But <laughs> oh, yeah. that one they fo they follow a hitman around. Yeah, I bought that when I was in co college because it's on Criterion and watched it, and I was like, won't be watching that again. Yeah. It took it to discreet place. So I, I was gonna say, did you sell it? Yeah, I was like, I'm good on that. The man, '90s right gave on. us a lot of like those. There was yeah. like the '70s gave us hardcore stuff that's hard to watch yeah. again, and the '90s did too. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when you wander off into the Henry portrait of a serial killer, yes, man bites dog and stuff like that. Oh, the what extreme. was the one? Uh, the one movie. No one even talks the about one him anymore. Quote unquote vampire movie that you brought. Um, oh, oh, Habit. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um. So. Uh, so they the so it's basically it's uh, Taylor and her two uh, photographers I guess, mm -hmm. and they're gonna go meet this guy and he's gonna explain how he does all this stuff. So um, in a very plucky, upbeat way. He reminded me of um, 
Jim Cummings and Wolf of yes. Snow Hollow. Yeah. I was like, and there's a parallel universe where Jim Cummings makes a movie like this, and yeah. I want to watch that movie because, <laughs> like, they have that same kind of weird wacky charm, but right. I like it better coming from Jim Cummings. I think. Yeah, yeah, but, it's kind of got that same energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's kind of thing, right? Like he's yeah, okay. So you know, he's he's plotting this murder spree, but he's not like a psycho killer. No, he's got moments he's got- of creepiness, but. Mm-hmm. But does he come off as psychotic? It's like he comes off as this kind of in his sheer say. indifference towards what he's going mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But it's rational, thought out, yeah. pre planned. He's mm-hmm. uh, engaging, charming. I suppose psychopaths are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, they get you. But uh, but it, also like it. It feels like anyone not part of his plan is safe. Like it's just the people part of his plan that are right that are yes. in danger of of anything. Yeah, and so that's what this is kind of setting up is that in any slasher movie that you've seen, nothing happens by happenstance. Mm-hmm. The killer has planned this all out months and months and months in mm-hmm. advance. Right. There's like a whole slasher movie backstory. Yeah, I love it. Um, which <laughs> really doesn't matter at all, but it's like you have to have that. I think in a slasher movie, the legend. Yeah. Yes. Right. And then this one involves an apple orchard. A mm-hmm. waterfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very fall themed. Gets, uh, it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is kind of nice. Like I like the ambiance. Mm-hmm. The town of Glen Echo. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was also the production company. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which came first or mm-hmm. second, but I do like how much commentary there is about how like killers in the late sixties, early seventies were so sloppy and they didn't have to do any preparation. They could just like act on impulse. Cause like, that's basically talking around how like, yeah, things are more difficult for us now. Cause like DNA and shit exists. We have to like <laughs> plan still, more. Yeah. Whereas like, in, more like, difficult to kill. Yeah. In the sixties, you just get a haircut after you kill someone and you're fine, you know, like, <laughs> shave or grow a beard. Yeah, and you're yeah, fine. Exactly. You're talking about, so Scott Wilson shows up and yeah. this is kind of like, he's uh Leslie Vernon's mentor, Correct. a serial killer who that's retired. Yeah. <laughs> retired and lived with one of his victims did they yeah. ever say that in this or am i remembering a deleted no, she, scene no, she was the final girl or she, okay. yeah, she yeah. makes a joke about it but yeah, yeah she's like she was, she, <laughs> yeah they make a like joke a about it. that fell in love with the serial killer she, yeah she's but like they but ended but up I, having a very happy yeah. life she's like but i got you he's like you got me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their relationship's kind of cute which is fucked up to say but like i know i, I like, like their scenes i was like i i like that this movie makes me love these people yeah. like right. every, everyone's so charming and delightful I'm like right. I want to go to this dinner party <laughs> but they're all like psychotic right. there's nothing <laughs> the only thing that's different is just the context of what they're talking about or the content of what they're talking about other than that it's just fucking normal exactly yeah, and cute just, and charming and I like these people yeah, yeah. and I love I love how he even has like a boomer take on like <laughs> this I love how he back in my days serial killing yeah. like he applies yeah. that logic to say like back in my day it's we just, that all. it's like wow it's you could so fill in the cute. blanks yeah. it's just so cute because she's like can we be happy he found an Ahab. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's just a so, big day yes. for him. She's so proud of him. Like, it's just adorable. I yeah. love it. Well, what's a well? Um, I did read because I was I was sitting there, you know, like if 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 Michael Myers and and Jason and Chucky are real, then who is Scott Wilson? We right. do see him doing a barbecue at some point, right. and I'm like, is this Leatherface? Right? Is this, you know, because he says like back in the day we just you know killed a bunch of people and then we ran. Yeah. He's like, but Michael and Freddie and Jason changed it all because they kept coming back, you know, and they right. revolutionized. And I guess you know you're thinking about slasher movies. They did the fact that you'd have a, a franchise out of it you know because you'd never kill him at the end they right. all keep coming back um i guess in the original script did you read this Mm-mm. he was originally written as uh billy from black christmas but that's i guess cool. they changed oh, really? it enough that you know they took that completely yeah, out of it bummer. but he you know billy was is, right well i'm not gonna spoil well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> christmas Wilson is just such a lovable man like, yeah he's so sweet mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah, but he's supposed to have killed know, like all these people. Yeah, like, crazy killer. I love it, <laughs> Holly. That's what Sweet. they tell you in court too. They're always like, "I couldn't have killed all those people. I'm a sweet old man." Like, I'm sure the like Long Island serial killer is going to do that. I'm sure the Golden State Killer probably was like, like, "But I I'm a helpless you. old man." I, yeah, you, know, you, you like, can't fall for it if you're ever on jury duty, God Holly. Damn, you but can't I will do too. <laughs> I did have some questions as to why he was uh, uh, talking freely on camera, but I suppose by the end of the movie, we're supposed to understand that no one's really supposed to ever see this. Right footage. Yeah. Right. I had that thought too. I was like, "Is it just the thought that his ego is so out of control that it doesn't? He's not thinking about the consequences yeah. of it." Right. Like, but through context, you're like, "Oh, this is the thing you were talking about." Yeah. And just yeah. Like, oh, it was yeah. the thing he was talking about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I like the layers though, because even at one point he was like, "Look, by the end of this, I'm either going to be dead, I'm going to be in prison, or I'm going to be in hiding." So either mm-hmm. way, right? So it's like 
He's a step ahead, and he's like multiple steps ahead. Leslie, like, you're saying, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, he's, that's the yeah. idea. You've wandered yeah. into it's, this. It's chess. He could go either way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He set up the multiple scenarios. It's kind of funny all the training that he has to do uh, to prepare for cardio, being a, a psycho killer. The cardio was a good. That was that's a, a rule for that like that's funny. a that's a rule for like a lot of things. Zombieland. This yeah. Movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a scene he's I like, thought was in this. Like, Maybe you it's to, you have to look like you're walking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. yeah. It's real tough. It's really hard. <laughs> There's a scene that actually shows him doing it that I thought was in the movie, but maybe it was in the trailer or something. But you actually see him. Like, he's like, okay, I'll demonstrate it. And he, like, you know, standing there when she looks back and then runs up yeah. behind right, her and yeah, stops. Yeah. I think I remember that from the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Leslie has picked a victim target group a target girl he explains that he's picked a girl who has to be a virgin this is because of uh other slasher movie analysis was this pauline kale or somebody who were uh men women and chainsaws oh, yeah. you know it's like mm-hmm. the, that's what coined the final girl term i think so mm-hmm. right which okay why don't they say that in this movie it's survivor girl. why is it survivor girl like that felt wrong to me. Like this movie, for how much it knows, should know that like well, no one says they survivor. They change girl. it just based on the fact that they're referring to these things as being real, and so they wanted yeah. to change the 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 term for it just so it wasn't Final Girl like four movies because they're not talking about these things like they are movies. They're talking about like, like we're looking at real serial killers here. It just felt it's like when you reason. can't sing the happy birthday song on TV, so then you sing the other. It felt like that, and right. it's like, why are yeah. we? Because uh, like it's the same thing, but just yeah. like the great value version of it. Right. It's, like, it's just, definitely a choice, yeah. but I think I, 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 that's the only thing I can think of is why they would do that. Right, just because they made that switch mm-hmm. where you know Michael Myers is real, mm-hmm. so it's not final girls like we would talk about with horror movies survivor girl i guess it would be pretty fucked up if we were talking about a true crime thing we were like and so the final girl instead of like the victims Uh, like the survivor yeah yeah yeah. yeah. if we call them final girl yeah yeah, right it'd be fucked up like i'm trying to think of one but i was just like (laughs) i guess like all those nurses richard speck murdered and like the two that lived right we were like the nurse final girls yeah exactly people look at you like what the fuck are you talking about these are people right okay that's a valid point all right there we go i think we figured it out it might depend on the actual survivor though like she might take she might be like hell yeah i'm the final i mean girl. i think like, later on you I can made you, it. You, you should can, capitalize you on that, that shit yeah i made it yeah, yeah. like yeah Re- reclaim that shit yeah like do a memoir like the real final girl. yeah exactly yeah mm-hmm. fuck yeah i'd do mm-hmm. that well not what? that i want to ever be there. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. say well, you heard I, a knock on some this wood. This is not an invitation. <laughs> no, saying, you're talking to people, Holly. This Don't forget that. This is not an invitation. Tempting fate with that one. <laughs> yeah. um, he has chosen, well, she has to be a virgin, I think is uh, like the one of the criteria because um, slasher movie, he's going to be, yeah. he's representing all that's evil. And then there's like the forces of good, which is uh, a virgin and an Ahab. These are yeah. like factors that have to fact, that have to factor into the story. Yeah. Um, What's an Ahab? Captain it's Ahab. your Captain Ahab. He's Dr. obsessed Loomis. with yeah. sacrificing himself yeah, for the greater obsessed, good. Obsessed with the whale. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's Robert Englund playing uh, playing Donald Dr. Loomis. Playing, yeah, yeah, playing, playing Loomis. Loomis. Yeah. yeah, which is fucking it's, awesome. Right, which like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and he is like chewing it up, and I love it. But his character's name is Doc Holleran. So Dick Holleran from The Shining. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah. There's a bunch of Easter eggs like laid those, throughout yeah. the... We saw the Rabbit in Red Lounge. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we did, yeah. Um... So the whole gist of it is that basically this girl, the reporter, um, is kind of then like complicit in what's going to happen. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, just based on, I mean, she is, I think, and she, I think she goes along with it. Cause I mean, I mean, deep down she obviously, she doesn't know where it's going to go and maybe she's fooling herself and doesn't think anything's really going to happen. But That's the impression I got, is thing. that right, they don't yeah. they don't think any of this is actually going to happen. Right, they don't think it's going to get to a stage where... They think where... he's just, like, a weirdo that eventually it's just going to, like, play out in a fake way, that right. it's not actually going to happen. Right, even though he does murder someone and they're hooting and hollering in the parking lot a yeah. little bit later on, yeah. when Zelda Rubenstein gets it. Did he kill her, or did she pass out? I wasn't I entirely sure. Out. Yeah, because I, okay. I was like, I thought there was supposed I'll to be a that. murder, yeah, but then Doc out. Holleran showed up. I thought she fainted. Okay, so there was yeah. she no fainted, okay. so yeah. Yeah, which is why I was like, okay, so they're still like on the adrenaline. We're still innocent, they're right? They're still right, like yeah. in the adrenaline of it all. Like, yes. They're like playing a game. Yeah. But it is taking, a, like she's taking a position where she seems uncomfortable with the idea that like, well, you're talking about like 
killing people the right. whole way through it. And he's like, yeah, but this is his job, right? I don't know how he makes like any I, money at this he, job. It is like, <laughs> I have to do this. It's like, oh, no, this is just it's what I do every day. Yeah. Matter of fact. It's the career. Of it's the, the, the tools of the trade he keeps referring to, even though there's no, you know, how does he make any kind of income off this? It's just, just what he does for the sake of. later on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and. Um, he doesn't do it for the money, Colin. <laughs> no. No, because he has like a whole spiel toward the end, right? Is uh, why he's doing it. Mm-hmm. Which was. Uh, I mean, I know that he said yeah, it. I made a choice, you yeah, know, to do this to was, represent all this. She was t- like, "You don't have to do this. Like, this this is not your personal uh, path. You're you're choosing this." And he's like, "Yeah, just like you chose journalism." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is like a little slam. I kind of like sticking it to journalism. I'm, I was I'm like, fine with I it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, journalism is notoriously exploitative. So, like, I kind of hate when they take a moral high ground on anything. You know. But that is like uh, this time through watching it. I guess I was kind of you know the first time through you're kind of watching it for the the thrill of you know seeing a slasher movie analyzed by the movie itself. Mm-hmm. And this time I was kind of watching it like, oh, they're, they're making all these digs at journalism because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I guess you're exploiting yeah. this subject because you think, that, well, this is going to be the big documentary that I mm-hmm. have. But it's like, you know, there's a lot of times they keep cameras rolling where somebody should have intervened. I, this reminded me a lot of the HBO documentary, The Jinx. Mm. Mm. Those people followed around a serial killer for two years until they caught him on a hot mic admitting something like yep. and then they nearly like can you imagine being the person that you get catch that hot mic and it's the piece that you need and this thing that you've actually dedicated your life to towards works out but in the worst way like yeah. <laughs> like that was it we moved on too quickly from that guys we really, we really like as a society <laughs> yeah. we need to go back and talk about robert durst like basically admitted on camera to murdering people like mm-hmm. we moved on way too fast yeah, but wasn't yeah. it the authorities found out about it when the documentary aired is that correct or am yeah, i wrong or did they turn that, that they sat on it yeah, which yeah. is the exploitative nature <laughs> yeah. of journalism yeah. like it's, it's like do they we tell the police or do we yeah. put it in our documentary well, yeah. the, there, we was, the well, there was two pieces of evidence with that documentary it was him on the hot mic but it was also they found a letter that he wrote that had the same right handwriting and spelling mistake as a letter that was left at the scene of a crime of someone that was murdered mm-hmm. so that they had two pieces of very strong evidence tying him to that but Mm -hmm. it highly irresponsible to sit on that information Mm -hmm. for as long as they did though yeah (laughs) well i mean i guess that's the nature of the thing you're trying to forward your own careers or do transformative journal journalism or something that makes a change in society look at the you know is that what she's trying to go for here at least the filmmakers what is their goal with this is it just that i need to Pass my senior thesis, like I mean, probably she's know? probably just looking for a hook that'll get her an A for her project yeah. and further her reputation as a journalist, right? And if I'm just wondering else, what the perspective is on it, you know. Well, if nothing else, it's kind of an interesting. Uh, up until a certain point, it could mm-hmm. be an interesting. Per- if nothing else, you're following a uh, a it's crazy a, person who's not going to yeah. kill someone, it's but is a person. It's an interesting story. People, right. are, people are going to be interested in it, right? Sure. Yeah, even yeah. if this guy didn't end up murdering mm-hmm. anybody, if you got up did everything he did up to a certain point mm-hmm. and he didn't kill anybody. Yeah. That's still an like interesting if, person, like, even if they are going to end up in the loony yeah, bin at some if point. If I heard there was a documentary out about someone who thought he was a serial killer, I'd watch the shit out of that. Right. <laughs> It's, it's an <laughs> even though it, even though it would be probably deeply exploitative, you know, yeah. like yeah. I mean, that's, oh, on yeah. some level, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's the nature of the of the beast. That is the that is the like moral quandary of true yeah. crime all the time. Where does mm-hmm. it stop being helpful, investigative, and when does it start being like crazy fandom mm-hmm. exploitative yeah. stuff? Well, this movie does make a look at the staircase. There's a there's a twist that happens because it's a found for, and we're going to spoil this movie. I mean, I guess we're going to have to uh, talk about this at some point, but um, it does change from being a found footage movie into like a straight ahead. Thank God. They literally say, <laughs> they literally say documentaries over. Yeah. Right. We do dip in uh, some earlier on in the movie. We dip into what would is technically a movie movie, a slasher movie at a certain point, And we hop out of the documentary. Yeah, there are, there are moments when I could look up. Right. I mean, we started, <laughs> we started that way technically when he, with yeah. uh, Kelly, the girl he's right. talking at the diner, it starts out as a movie and then we jump into the documentary part of it mm-hmm. and then we jump back out of it a little bit later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, um, he's, meticulous in showing like how he's actually like uh, uh how he's chosen uh his victims right. um 
his workout routine and then how he's like set traps. But I guess before that, there's like this whole thing about how he actually makes her, his victim, Kelly, our intended victim, uh, aware of him. Right, like this right. is a whole thing because, like, there's yeah, they call, what do you call a flyby? Is yeah, when they're doing the diner thing and everything. But yeah, he just uh, the serial killer just shows up, but doesn't actually strike. It's just lurking from afar. Yeah, like the woman in black or all those Blumhouse ghosts. Or I'm always wondering, is that what they're doing? They're just doing flybys. Like, how come they're not doing something right now? Like, what is, <laughs> is somebody in your house? Why don't you chase them out? You know, your ghost, your demon thing. Wait you for a yeah, I like that he calls it a flyby. It's a great <laughs> term for it. <laughs> um. So Leslie Vernon is supposedly a kid who, um, the bastard son of, died. Who yeah was thrown like the angry townsfolk. Would he kill his mom or something? I can't remember. I don't remember? Yeah, was, he, he, was, the yeah, he was the bastard son. And he was abused. He was abused. He was basically worked to death as a slave. Yeah. Um, by plowing fields like on his own with just oh a the hand side yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the apple orchard and yeah. everything, which is where and his then, mom ended up being hung. And then he eventually snapped. He got tired of being a slave and killed his mom and dad or pseudo dad or whatever. Yeah. And the townsfolk threw him over the falls. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now he's plotting his return. So he has to plant the idea in Kelly's mind that somehow she's related to this event. I like that. So she goes to the library. Zelda Rubenstein is the librarian. A lot of what we do is CGI. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, that was yeah. funny. Um, so he leaves a uh, a, a newspaper clipping yeah. that, like, it's a fake newspaper uh-huh. clipping that ties his, her family to to the Leslie yeah. Vernon thing. It's like her distant uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, and but Zelda Rubenstein does actually know because in that makes her give the like oh there was this story about this little boy so like that is actually a legend in this town yeah, he takes an actual legend and then he like falsely links it to kelly and it falsely and links himself. it to himself, and himself. And yes. himself which i yeah. guess is what our ahab character dr loomis right yes fell in has figured out is he's the psychiatrist who treated a guy named leslie manzuko manzuko mancuso yeah. mancuso in reno nevada yeah and now he's assumed the identity of this uh, murdered kid <laughs> yeah. to be like, oh, I'm coming back and 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 wrecking my revenge mm-hmm. on the town um, to grow his legend. And he's also set up the the kill box, mm. right? Which is going to be a house. Are we yeah. sure how they he's luring these kids as target victims? Yeah, because it really is a local legend. So these kids are going to like spend the anniversary of the death of this guy at the house. Because so they, they can, do that every year right, anyway, right? So they right? can do drugs and drink mm-hmm. and have sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all plotted out. But what, he's got... What does he say? Like, this is my my supposed ancestral home? Or yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> well, later so on funny. when it's revealed that it's not, he's like, welcome to my supposed ancestral home. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But he's got the it's whole thing well rigged. Script. <laughs> um, and it's basically just going through, like, all the cliches of, of slasher movies. Some of them that I liked was that, you know, like, all the, the, the windows on the ground floor are nailed shut. Nailed mm-hmm. shut. And it's like, wouldn't they just break them? It's like, you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> they but usually no. break them on, like, the second floor yeah. and end up on the roof and, you know, uh, at a high enough level where it's... Uh, well, I know. like that a lot of the branches have been cut like almost like, completely through so yeah. that when you step on them on the second floor window, you fall just right, right to he the just, ground. He That's goes great. through his list of things he's yeah. done to this house and then and it's it's fun because it's interesting for the movie. But then, you know, you as a viewer, if you know anything about horror movies or if you've seen a lot of them, you're just going back through your head. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, all right. Got it. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like they do stuff that makes sense. It's a checklist but of tropes. Right. Yeah. So they're they're going the behind the scenes of all these little things, which, you know, in a slasher movie, like no killer would ever do. But when you go behind it and look at it, it's like, oh, yeah, it makes sense that that is why that would happen. You know what they were missing was the cell phone jammer. Because uh, at some point there is like, there's no cell phone service it. here. Right. Did he they have did a cell phone jammer? Like the actual jammer? Did he have one or like, I got my cell phone jammer oh, or whatever. You yeah, know what I mean? Because, well, the house had no service. It was in a no service area. Oh, he had already scoped it out. Yeah. I mean, I suppose Probably, it's what. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the the one dude he tried to make the call. Although, if no this service. was made now, yeah. would explicitly there would be a more. I think more a little more technology behind it, especially with cell phones and everything. They'd be yeah. like, and this is where we just cut off signal to everything. Yeah, that would definitely be part of it now. I mean, in two thousand six, it's legit that there wouldn't be service. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. we had flip phones and shit at that yeah. point. I don't so. think we saw like a guy 
mime taking up. I don't think we even saw his phone when mm. one of the characters takes him. It's like, there's no service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like, when was the iPhone? Like, 03, 01? No, that like was... Like, I think 06. 06, 07, oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. 06 was the iPhone, yeah. so mm-hmm. we're still in, we're yeah, still no, in this uh, was, the this dark times. This is prime this razor was, territory. <laughs> <laughs> prime razor <laughs> this was Blackberries. Yeah. I was like, this was like sidekick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sidekick was like the, <laughs> the hottest thing. Yeah, the hottest thing. Everyone else had the flips. Pink razors. I had a flip. Sometimes I do miss having a full hard keyboard, though. Yeah. Sometimes I do miss that. Mm-hmm. It's just not Especially if you got big ass thumbs like I do. Yeah. And you're always typing the wrong thing. And then like autocorrect the is always coming up with the weirdest it's combinations. A bitch. Mm-hmm. Of- yeah. It's a ditch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what autocorrect would say. Yes. <laughs> Um, aside from cutting all the branches, he's also pre-scored all the obvious weapons that, yeah, uh, I like this. Uh, yeah. that people would use. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, all the ones up front, so as soon as you enter, the th- thing you would grab the most, he's like, I already pre-cut this handle, so on the first swing, this will break. Mm-hmm. The, I've loosened the uh, top of the sledgehammer, so that'll come right off. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's... And then I like his his metaphorical analysis of what he's doing as well. Which is what? Um, that everything is either related to... Uh, uh, phallic or the womb? <laughs> okay, the closet Everything. one lost me though. I was like, all right, well, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's why it's yeah. supposed to be stupid. It's, it's like right. you're reaching here. Like you if, if maybe if the if um um oh, I, what the fuck's her name? I, I forgot her name. Taylor. Um, Taylor. Yeah. yeah, maybe if Taylor if. There's a certain point where they're all gathered in a room and they're like, "We have to protect you." He's after you. If he'd like, get in the, if she'd been like, "Get in the closet. It's the safe place. It's yeah. the room." Well, they go in the closet at some point. Yeah. I thought for sure something was going to happen in there because yeah. they're they right. start inverting the. The tropes at mm-hmm. uh, at some point in the movie after they've set them up, but nothing ever does. But yeah, the closet is a safe space. Why? Because like, it's tradition. But only you know? for him. <laughs> Michael Myers busted through a closet yeah. in his first. That's movie. what I was thinking too. That's why I was like, like mm. what do you, what do you call like, it? He was like the OG opposite of phallic. He's like, yeah, yeah. lady yeah. girl parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also that little sit down interview where they're both sitting in chairs across from yeah. each other. The Diane answer interview of it yeah. all. That part was also specifically very funny. That yeah. was funny. She's like, and chauvinist. She's like, so you're. Pro life, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, um, okay. <laughs> There's some really, it, I, I don't want to say it's stupid because it's, it's intentional. It's, it's very, funny. it's very well, it's funny, and it's I think yeah. it's very well written. Um, it's but funny because it kind of, it's supposed to be stupid, right? That's and what that's makes it funny. It like, really is because the way he answers is like, what, what does he call it? It's it's like intrinsic. It's it's just part of it. You have to accept it. It's yeah. like, wow, well, we don't. But uh, I love that he's just like, <laughs> it's conventional, right? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's convention. convention. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's convention. <laughs> you have to accept with it with movies, like, sl- uh, serial killers, <laughs> misogyny. It's convention. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he won't attack anyone in a closet. He won't attack anyone in the shed. Only one character is allowed to go in the shed. It has to be the virginal uh, final girl or survival survivor survival girl. girl. Yes, yeah. he and doesn't roll off the tongue no, the same way. No. Oh. But I guess, see, this is, uh, it's it's incorporated. The movie is incorporating a lot of that, like, uh, you know, psychoanalysis of slasher movies mm-hmm. that you've heard, like, over the past 30 years or whatever, right? Right. Mm-hmm. It's like you have a, a girl who's a virgin who has to arm herself with a phallic weapon and, and penetrate the threat. Yeah. Travel with through a, a birth yeah. canal. She's empowering <laughs> herself with cock. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he goes with. It's like, oh. Yes. And then she's reborn a hero at the other side. And you're like, well, I guess that is kind of what these movies have. I don't know if they, that was I've on heard anybody's. That read about it's Corey an interpretation. Strode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But these, yeah. The, all those analysis came like years later. Right. You know, because um, at the time. I mean, that's, you know, because uh, I, I always hear somebody who's uh, Jason Voorhees always appears with the storm. There's always a rain. So he's a force of nature that huh. that comes in. It's like, OK, well, it does happen. But it also makes for like a more visually, it's, you know, yeah. well, sure. But I guess yeah. if you're reading a film, I'm like, right. it's not it's intended that, by the also like a deba- it's scary. But both yeah. that's the base level of it. <laughs> both things scary. can be true. Yeah. yeah, both can be true. Mm-hmm. It's not at that binary. But I know? think but that's also what kind of gives. I think, uh, you know, slasher movies, this kind of like lasting power beyond like just, you know, while you're going to watch a bunch of people get killed. There Mm -hmm. is like this kind of, and I guess Cabin in the Woods kind of went there, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there is this, well, Cabin in the Woods sets it up as like, well, there's this ritual that we have to do in order to to appease, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. some kind of uh, something within the human being Mm -hmm. has to be able to go see this. It's like, that's kind of what they're talking about here, Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so the actual night of the planned slaughter comes, mm-hmm. right? And you've still got, um, your character Taylor is still having a moral problem with this. She actually tries to go and talk to, 
uh, the victim mm-hmm. uh, yes. in a diner, I think, right? And she's confronted mm-hmm. by the doctor. And then Leslie gets all upset with her. But um, so the actual night arrives. This is Christmas, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and he's very, I, he's so happy. I was like, I like that moment when they're sitting there on the barn and, and he just starts crying. He's like, I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> he's sobbing. <laughs> I'm so happy. And she, she's like confronting or comforting like, him. Consoling like, it's, him. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's okay. She grabs his hand and everything. He's like, this is a murderer. Yeah, right. Because I guess that's because what at you're this supposed point, to be. She doesn't know yeah, oh, that, no, it's, yeah. that it's for real. Right. She just like, sees this, is a, this, is she man just sees this down. man like breaking down because his, his goal is finally coming to fruition, but she doesn't know that it's actually about to happen. Right. Well, I mean, but he's been telling her it's been going to happen like the whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's not like, like he misled her. I mean, she just no. didn't believe it. Well, yeah. it's yeah, that weird thing where she's it. like, she has empathized with him because she spent so much time with him and he's like an affable guy, you know, right. it's like, so he's very personable. And so he's like, I'm going to do this thing. And she's like happy for him, but conflicted. And this, you he know, sounds like Will Ferrell. How do you not enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. Because at this point, like the audience is kind of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. We're excited for him and his journey. Right. Too. <laughs> and, and, he, yeah. and they do look at it like, and he makes it into this thing. Like we're doing this together. This is, this is a good thing. This yeah. is what I do. And like, thank you for being on this journey with me. He's like, and normally I do this alone, but since you're here, you can be a part of it. Like, right. has he done like this he, before? she pulls the brick earlier on. It's like, and you're going to help me. Yeah, like, yeah, that was, yeah. You're yeah. going to be <laughs> complicit. In this. You pull the brick out of the door. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was wondering had he done it before. I mean, I guess uh, I under his other yeah. name somewhere else, because he says, you know, usually I do this or whatever. Yeah, he never like it's never confirmed that he's successfully done this before. Right. But clearly, like there's some sort of um, like intention that caused him to be hospitalized and and have a doctor in the first place. Right. So he's at least gotten close enough that he's been like under arrest and been under. Um, under care and observation. Right. And enough to have um, put a restraining order on his psychiatrist mm-hmm. and have that big, can you do that if you are, have murdered people and then have been <laughs> caught and all that? I don't know if you yeah, can. Yeah, I don't know if you can. Right. Can, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if, if that's possible. That's you funny. If you're a murderer. Yeah, right. The idea that Michael Myers could file a restraining order because like, no, like, Vince Lewis because yeah. like, he keeps bugging me. He yeah. will not leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really getting on my nerves. It's really messing up my life. That's yeah. funny. That would be. <laughs> He's on his own time. It's not on, you know, there's a hospital. I don't think he goes to his job anymore. More. <laughs> I think he only follows me around, Your Honor. No, you play the dimension angle. Like, I think there's something not right. He just keeps mm-hmm. telling us he's a doctor and that he's, mm-hmm. you know, worked with me for 15 years and all this shit. I don't know who this man is, Your Honor. <laughs> he, he, he blew himself up. Yeah. <laughs> he tried and to then kill me. Kept, and then kept, came back again after he blew himself up. Like, just, uh, Your Honor. So this is <laughs> for the movie Loomis, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Like, yeah. Don't yeah, you dare yeah. say that, Colin. Oh, it's no. That's the prequel. That's the Peacock prequel. <laughs> It's going to be a TV series. Yeah. 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 Stop. Young Loomis. And, no. a, and they're going to have like Jacob Elordi play Loomis or somebody like uh, too tall and handsome. No. <laughs> I will flip Right. This. Yeah. Loomis has a smolder and he's yeah. sexy. And, and he's 6'5 now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, uh, well, we got the Crystal Lake. His yeah, Bates yeah. Motel was. Yeah. So but at least they Crystal cast Link. a freak of an actor in that one. Freddie Highmore is good casting because yeah, that guy's long and wiry and weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> long and wiry and weird. Well, the. Uh, the So Leslie gets going with his murder spree. Um, Taylor finally has like a moral objection when people are being killed in the next room. Like, yes. okay, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> and we're he's like, all right, everyone outside, everyone out. And he's like, why are we doing this? Cause you had that look in your eye mm-hmm. that said, I have a problem with this. <laughs> and it's, it, it's just very funny. He leads them out. He's like, look, I'm not, this is, I told you, this is my night. You all stay out here, and then, then he gives his big speech about. I mean, this is where they have their emotional moment together about <laughs> what it means to her, uh, him and and to her, and um, you know, uh, it being his night. He thanks everyone for going along on the journey so far. He talks about um, how he's decided to be the. Uh, there's all this good in the world and everything, and the way that again, a very well written script, and the way they flip certain things. It's like a situation from uh, a, a romantic comedy where they have they're like the moment where they're honest with each other about certain things, but they flip it where he's talking about uh, all the good in the world. And, and I've decided to be the exact opposite of that yeah. because the world needs it. 
Yeah. <laughs> the world needs the, dire- the diametric opposite of all this good and happiness and love in the world. And that's what I need to be. Yeah. And he's very by, good by at choice. It. Yeah. Like, not because at. he's compelled, by choice yeah. to do it. Yeah. For this, he is these providing reasons. a service yeah. Yeah. to the universe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the universe needs this. Well, it turns out that uh, nothing goes according to plan because then this or is does where everything it? go or according to plan, Colin. <laughs> well, the, the movie becomes an actual movie at this point. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Taylor takes it upon herself. We got to go in there and stop this. So basically, in effect, she is introducing her and the two cameramen into the plot of this the, the slasher movie. Yes. And so I kind of like this that, yeah, it spent a lot of time explaining to us and showing us what was going to happen on the night, mm. right? It shows us the movie, kind of, mm. right. you know, when he's explaining what's going to happen. But then it flips it, so we're not just going over everything he showed us. Yeah. So we're not just retreading territory in it by them introducing themselves in the plot. And then they comment on that, that they've introduced themselves into the plan for the night and how it's changing and everything. And like, what would he do and where do we go? It gets a little choppy at this point. It does. There's a lot yes. of them going back to the house, coming out to the cars, going back to the house and whatever. And right. like, where is Leslie now? He's down in the basement or whatever, carrying out his plan. But they find out that the uh, intended target, Kelly, <laughs> is not a virgin. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we have to find the virgin and make sure she's safe. They go up into the bedroom. She's r- like, cow- reverse cow. <laughs> right. That is not a virgin like, position. No. no. Yeah. No virgin I've ever no. seen. That is an She has position. done that before. Yes. <laughs> yep. And so that means that uh, this whole this whole thing that he's been selling them on is a lie. Yes. Mm-hmm. And actually, Taylor is the target. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. I thought Which that was a good twist. Yeah. It is a good twist. Yeah. Cause I like it. Right, because what? Because what? It, him being, um, I mean, a psychopath and a killer at this point. What? Like, he must have been like giddy, t- and to like to find the victim that he wants mm-hmm. and to bring him into and explain the plan to the victim, mm-hmm. and then in have her insert herself in all this. Like this, it really was his Christmas. This must have made him the happiest in the world. At this, it's point. like when Dexter would get a villain that would match his skill level. He would get so hyped he'd be right. like oh fuck yeah we're playing with the big leagues now yeah. like, that's right. like his vibe here he's like i get so close and she has no idea you yeah know? Mm-hmm. yeah this must have been his favorite mm-hmm. thing in the world and he, can we make a movie about that's why that <laughs> moment when he's like i'm so happy like it was genuine yeah, right, yeah. We, can we make another movie outside of the movie where he explains to a different camera crew what he's doing with this camera crew <laughs> and, and this whole thing like that's, like, the, that's kind of the sequel have that's you seen like, one cut of the dead slasher. no yeah. no i haven't Is it, I hear it's, it's really pretty good, good. yeah it's like slasher inception but, yeah yeah that, Multiple part, layers if they were to on make that a one. sequel, part of it, I think, would have to be like just a, a, a quick trip back to that whole event, just to, so you remember what happened before. But again, he's talking to a very secret camera crew yeah. about what he's doing with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, write this down. <laughs> the multiple I, levels. I feel like if there was a sequel, it would be much more Book of Shadows y in its yeah, story, unfortunately. Sure. I, don't I was think kind of thinking Book of way. Shadows as well. Yeah. I was watching this. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm glad. Mm-hmm. It well, they've been talking about a sequel forever. Let's the not. Um, the interview I read with uh, um, the lead guy, Nathan, mm-hmm. um, was, I think, 20. 20- uh, 16 and he said it's, uh, it feels like you know we're getting close or something there might be news on that soon I'm like is Bro, there it was 10 years later but Come the, on, the, man, the journalist like, is- Kayla doesn't matter anymore it- we can do anything at any time but is no, it too no, late? No, no, that's that's the problem. That mindset no, right there no, is no, the no, exact no, problem. That's their mindset. Yeah. <laughs> is there that big of a uh, an audience for it no, behind the mask? Well, no, it was voted the third not. most voted for movie cult by following. listeners as a cult following. As like by our listeners. Yeah. yeah. This is a different. We're special people. This, yeah. Well, that's the, the the type of fan base that got Dark Knight of the Scarecrow two made, right? Or, Which Wicker, looked the Wicker Tree. Oh, oh yeah, we, we watched, watched the trailer, trailer and we couldn't oh. even finish the trailer. It was oh, that so looks bad. so yeah. bad. But you wonder, is there like an audience for those things? Do, I mean, did they did they make money? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if there's an audience that voted Witchery as the number four movie yeah. for us to watch, there is an yeah. audience for Night of the Scarecrow two. There you go. I love that movie. Um. So, uh, I guess, yeah, this, so that's actually I will what quit this podcast. If you v- viewers, brailers, dear listeners ever put in Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 2 on a list, <laughs> oh, I swear man. to God, it'll be the last you've heard. Somebody's writing it down right now. Yeah. Like, remember yeah, yeah, this? Yeah, for- yeah, play with fire. Do that, it. That there trailer you. Was, all, was impossible to oh watch. My God, the trailer was, so was impossible to watch. It was so bad. Thank God. 
So the whole gist of it, and there's many times, I guess, where Leslie gives Taylor an opportunity to go home yeah. with a clear conscience. You can leave. Right. But he's banking on it's like, I guess, because we're supposed to get the idea that he is such a uh, expert on human psychology. You know, he can plan everything ahead, knows what everybody's going to do. He knows she's just too curious. He knows her personality type. He's chosen her. They go into his library. He's got all the books he's been reading. He's been he's done his research. Yep. So he knows that she'll never back out and that she will inject herself into this. So at one point uh, when when he's describing his final girl, Taylor's like, you love her, don't you? And he's actually talking about her. She just doesn't know it. You know, it's like, but that's what you are kind of setting up. Right. Right. It's like this is a very intense relationship between the guy who's going to kill her and the girl who's going to try and kill him Mm -hmm. in the, you know, and I suppose that's what, you know. That's analysis of these movies. I mean, Freddie and any, uh, that's and, any good love story. And, right. It's gonna kill each other first. Nancy and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um so with the uh you know, the revelation that she's actually the the target, um, the camera guys uh there's a scene where one of the camera guys uh like tries to lure um Leslie. So Rule number he, one, no one escapes. Yeah, he has. We should talk about it. what does he look like. What's his costume? What, what's his I, it's slasher? It's like a weird hillbilly, like overalls, thermal shirt, but it's got a bunch of. It, honestly, it looks very spirit Halloween. It looks too cheap. I don't like this look because we can tell it's got it's a mask with like it's a the mask, mask isn't good and it has like the little strands of hair like yeah you know, the spirit Halloween. But store. like the burn holes in the shirt look really bad and fake, and it just ugh, the overalls. It's. I think that uh, purposeful. I, I was like, I think that's the point. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. That it looks good on camera, but it's actually like, I mean, is that what they're going for? Or I don't think it looks good on camera. Well, I mean, they're, yeah. well in the yeah. movie yeah. parts, does it look better? Because they light it Somewhat. right. Somewhat. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's got a, a, a scythe that he uses. That yeah. Is but his mask twice. is just kind of like plain, but like big eye holes, but he paints his eyes black around them. Right. I don't really a- know how to describe the mask. Like it's. Look it up. It's described by one of the characters as he looks like a scarecrow. Um, yeah, kind of. I don't know if that's what he was going for. I mean, it's a slasher look, yeah. I guess. I mean, but the, the look is supposed to emulate the the field worker that the legend is based on. So he's got yeah. like the overall. Like if he, he came out of the and... if he came out of the waterfall right. as a dead person. Yeah. yeah, it's just kind of like I guess because the eye holes are like so big. It so lo- big. has like a. It looks like either an alien, yeah. right? Or alien it looks like it's happy. Um, it doesn't really look terribly Does intimidating. Look happy to you? No. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, right. it it's just, just got a, a sharp line as a mouth. Yeah. But I guess like the thought is that like the Halloween mask is extremely simple, right? And it works. And yeah. so like this one has that same kind of like white sheen to it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, well, it's hard to get a slat, find a slasher mask that it doesn't look. Happy you Death know. Day did it. Yeah. Good. Right, yeah. Baby. Well, again, yeah. Well, you can get you can get there, yeah. but not all of them work. Yeah. Yeah. The Red Devil from Scream Queens, I like too. I was like, oh, that was a pretty good one. A little, yeah. The high school mascot of the yeah. Okay, yeah. So you just go start with the mascot, <laughs> work your way off there that. You one. Yep. Yeah. Needs to be a little like gopher, go- well, giant see, gopher. Well, now, head well, I was gonna say, now we're asking for the furries movie with the mascots. <laughs> Is that not Five Nights at Freddy's? Uh, <laughs> not like furry creatures murdering they, people, yes, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. <that movie. laughs> well. Um, so what, what happened? Well, yeah, there's a scene where, um, I guess that you don't normally see in slasher movies, um, where, uh, the camera guy, uh, like run, falls and trips over. And so Leslie uh, f- catches him. And so then it's like, you know, Leslie, it's me, man. Yeah. You know, like we're in this together, man. Yeah, feeling his face, it's like it's me. And he peels the the you know because there's always a scene where the the killer is unmasked. But in this movie, I guess it's done in a way that's like, well, these two guys know each other. It's like mm-hmm. you're looking at some guy who's like yeah. he's gonna kill you, but mm-hmm. you're like buddies with him. Mm-hmm. But right. now he's like in killer mode, <laughs> so he's just mm-hmm. gonna do it. And Leslie doesn't kind of register as like you know having any kind of like he's committed to this. He yeah. this is what he's gonna do. Mm-hmm. He knew when he was like saying goodbye to all of them they're like well good luck <laughs> yeah it's like it's fun up till this point yeah okay. i'm gonna chase you all down and kill you and that's been the plan all along um taylor survives right is there anything significant well, she, she, that happens with- well i mean she there i mean she ends up 
She ends up as being the last one eventually. Again, this is where you were talking about it gets a little choppy, maybe it gets a little long, sometimes a little yeah, repetitive. Because he, cause he really does succeed in like knocking off the kids one by one. Yeah, he really does. And he goes point. through those. And even um, uh, Doc, uh, Robert Englund, shows up, as you would expect him would, because he did before, who, who gets stabbed and taken out. He gets beamed with a... Oh, he well, he gets beamed with the shovel, but then he does come back. Yeah, but that thing with the shovel I thought was kind of funny, because I'm like, if this is Robert Englund's like, entirety of his role... That, I mean, like... It would have been right, real that funny been <laughs> if that was it. Like, yeah. he's supposed to be the guy who comes, and in the previous version, you know, he kind of, uh, I think, shoots Leslie or takes him out, or it's a possibility. Um, <laughs> this one, yeah, if he just showed up and got knocked out and was that was it. Yeah. One of the guys, they think it's Leslie coming in the door, so they brain him and <laughs> right. knock him out of the movie. Yep. Yeah. Um, but he, then, yeah, he does show up again. Right. He does get stabbed. Uh, I mean, you're right. The kids do get knocked off one by one. We do eventually figure out and through the conversation that he is after um, Taylor, mm-hmm. not the other ones. Although the one girl's just like, please, what happens to me? <laughs> I like that because she's the anointed one. Once they're like, it's you. You're right. the final girl. You're the virgin. Like right. the other characters are like, what are we supposed to do? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like all of a sudden, like, you know, like, you know, the future, what's going to happen because right. you're the, uh, you're preordained to survive this. What's going to happen to me? Right. Um, and then they do get knocked off one by one. And then she kind of, uh, she accepts her role and then turns into Jamie Lee Curtis at the end of H2O, basically. Yeah. She grabs an axe, takes off her sweater, and, and she's become Final Girl. I yeah. thought she looked a lot like Ginny in Friday the 13th Part 2. Ooh, a little bit. Yeah. There, especially yeah. when she had the sweater on. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I bet yeah. you that's what they yeah, were going. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. she had the same haircut and everything. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a long run through the orchard mm-hmm. where she's being chased, and there's, you know, a little back and forth. She gets him with the axe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get to the the cider press. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the cider press, which, you know, you're just thinking about like, oh, where do we end up? Because we go back to everything they all went through. Mm-hmm. We get back to the apple press. And uh, how did he set that up? Explaining it to the. He literally just. He was literally put pressing apples. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a cut yeah. too. He's eating an apple and he's pressing stuff. And he's yeah. like, and he's she's like, like what are you going to do with that? He's like, oh, I'm going to crush some apples, make some juice. Make some cider. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to get hurt with it. Somebody's so gonna did die. he know that that's where he's going to end up? I think so. Because I, th- the legend, right? Like I it think wraps he wants. I definitely yeah. think he wants all of this to happen. Mm-hmm. Like he, I think he wants in in some perverted way mm-hmm. as a yeah. killer. He he's, wants to end up in, in that his situation. Mind, he's a martyr, right? Yeah, like yeah. he's doing this for a higher purpose, right? And if he can know? go through all this stuff and survive, even better for him. Like he, he's 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 not kidding. When he's like, I might be dead, and that's. But I think he's okay with that. He is, but, yeah. But but he's like, but this will just add to the legend if I can do all this and then come out the other side of it. Yeah, like it's all be- it's all good for him, and it's all about like making her into like yes. this fighter. You know, is yes. like part of his. If that happens, I'm gonna be the He's happiest doing man this alive. For her in his <laughs> twisted mind, as he would say in the interview, <laughs> so she can be reborn. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess she is. There's uh, a yeah. you know because eventually she lights a fire and burns the whole place down. But they set all this stuff up too. The the idea that he was wearing fire retardant. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 He mentions that he's got it on, and so when she lit a fire, the first thing that went through my mind, I was like, oh, this is still part of his plan. Yeah. yeah. He's still planning to do this. And, like, when she right. crushes him in the in the apple press, he's like, ah, oh, Taylor, I'm glad it was you, you know? Right. And then he's like, ah. Oh. And I'm like, oh, but we remember we spent all this time hearing about, like, how he could control his heartbeat yeah. <laughs> in case you have to pretend to be dead. Yep. Um. And she and she, you know, uh, gas. This is it's all very dramatic and uh, overly dramatic at this point. Her kind of reactions to all of this stuff, um, and, and then you exactly know, what he planned. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and she he throws gasoline everywhere, lights the fire, sets everything up, um, and then is spooked by um, her cameraman and Robert Englund, who are still alive. You know, and, and as they watch the little barn in the field burn, as Leslie Vernon quote unquote dies, because she's like, I don't know what he was. And the doctor is like, he's just a man. He's just a man. Because, <laughs> you know, evil. Right. He's nothing but evil. No, it's the flip side of that. Right. that you know. Leslie! <laughs> <laughs> wow! 
<laughs> Just a man. Just a man. Uh, the calmer version of Dr. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There was a little uh, Easter egg at the end, which I thought was kind of cute. They, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. in addition to having the song Psycho Killer. By yeah. the talking head, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, bravo, nice bravo. Nice yeah, touch. that was a good good get. Um, Sometimes things yeah. are too on the nose, but I think this worked for it. It works. Yeah. Because this whole movie's on the nose. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it ended up in the, uh, over the credits. Yeah, we've got video footage from the morgue. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and as soon as you see your like. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and they take the entire credits to get to the point. Yeah, but it really is it. just like the morgue technician just like doing paperwork. Yeah. And, yep. and, I then, mean, and then the very last few frames, you see the body. Mm-hmm, sit up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's all you need. They do. That's they have the, they have the Halloween shot earlier too. Uh, the of him killer sitting up sitting behind up her. In the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the background. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're covering all their bases. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. They basically hit it all. All right, will there be a behind the mask too? Um, I guess that remains to be seen. They talk about it like they <laughs> want to do it at some point. I don't need one. I don't. <laughs> I know. I guess that's the thing. What more can you say? Right. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. You did it. Yeah. Unless, Unless you're going to comment on sequels, which is what Sean wants. So now he wants this movie. Yeah, but yeah. we already okay. did that. It was called Scream 2. Yeah, like a I telepathic like, shot. <laughs> Scream 2. Yeah. Yeah, that was like 25 years ago. We could do it again. Yeah. Once well, right. every 25 years, I'm fine with well, um, it, I mean, it's been a while since this movie, so who knows? We're, we're getting ready for it. Um, all right, so now uh, we're going to tell you if why, you why should. Why make a sequel to this when you can remake something that's well known, John? Touche. <laughs> 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 Ooh, burn, burn. Touche. Uh, all right, so now we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch Behind the Mask of the Rise of Le- Leslie Vernon. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to seek the assistance of our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. I wonder what, is there a documentary being made about Igor, do you think? It's going to be very short. That would be creepy. He, he rides his hell portal here, <laughs> drops off the mail, rides the hell portal back. I don't think he would ever allow cameras. No, he's I can't private. imagine. Yeah, no, he's no, no, no. He's a private person. <laughs> no, very private. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. I never well, see him, and I live here. We don't know much about yeah. him. Yeah, I know. He's no. somewhere in my basement. We don't know his age. Yeah. We don't know how many <laughs> people he's made from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, right. Well, we should remind the good folks at home how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along. On Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X, formerly Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on threads or Instagram at Sat Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Behind the Mask, Asobi Datura writes in and says, Honestly, this film hasn't gotten its due. I really love the performances by both leads, especially Nathan Basil's playful performance as mm-hmm. Leslie Vernon. The horror genre is full of cult films that never got its deserved praise and exposure, and I feel that this film is a rather bittersweet example of one. I really wish more people would see this film. Has, have a lot of people not seen this film? No, well, because two what, of you hadn't seen yeah, it, right? See I mean, it. but it's been about like I've known about it and I've known what it was. I just, you know, I didn't the, but know about I, me not seeing this is not any um, comment on the movie itself. That's me. I have a problem of just watching movies. <laughs> you do have a problem. Yes. yes. I, as, I, of this, <laughs> as of today, you just finished House of the Dragon. So, right, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so no, yeah, the yeah. problem is yeah. me, not the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, maybe. I don't know. I had never heard of it. I yeah, heard. So I, yeah. I saw it when it came out. I I think I got, it rented it on DVD from Hollywood Video and watched Aww. it. But, but I had heard about it. <laughs> yeah. from, I miss yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. They like, had the best horror section. I'm sorry, yeah. they did. <laughs> that was, my jam. was That's better where than. I, went. I was a Hollywood Video. I was, I was Hollywood, not a blockbuster. Yeah. I was person. not a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah I was later on. It was Hollywood you know Video. Yeah. You, all, you all glamorized blockbuster too much. No. And they were the corporate assholes of video rental back in the day. I'm sorry. Was where it's at. They get all the glory when they were the worst. That's how I feel about blockbuster. Like. Yeah, I don't think I didn't. I, work, I think, work for video stores. Yeah, they, you they work for the local ones. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, that's what I'm talking. And Blockbuster put those type yep. of people out of business. Yeah, so. I think Hollywood yeah. Video is the one that yeah. doesn't get it still. Yeah, yeah. talk yeah. about Blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood yeah. Video was awesome. Hollywood yeah. Video, Family yeah. Video, the only ones still around. Carrying they're not the torch. anymore. They're not. They're gone. Not here. Not here. They all closed here. Family Video. Yeah, they're all dollar stores now. What's a video store? Is that what your kid says to you? Uh, might as well. <laughs> Adam What's going Taylor, on, Box, Dad? Isn't there still one blockbuster? Like, still, I don't know. That in like Alaska or something? Yeah. something? yeah. 
Adam Kaler says, I've waited for quite so, quite a while for the Saturday Night Freak Show to tackle this one. I love this movie. I really enjoyed Nathan Basil's performance as he goes from completely endearing to creepy scary in a snap. I found myself questioning if Leslie would actually go through with his plan and also how I feel about going along with him on this journey. Mm-hmm. Does getting to know a friendly killer affect how I see the murderer as a person? And even more for Taylor and her group, would see, would they see things through to the end? I and could they live with the company, Leslie, and releasing their film, knowing that they might have stopped him? Will the turtles be arrested as the masterminds of Leslie? <laughs> the turtles. Plan? The turtle. Okay. I'm like, sorry, but as soon as the turtles showed up, I said, turtle people aren't right, what? which I stand by. Rocky had cuff and link. That's what I was, that's the first thing that popped <laughs> yes. in my head. I thought this was And he also be... had taken a lot of hits to the head, that's is my point. So <laughs> so... Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Turtle people. Yeah. Or people who become turtles. <laughs> living in sewers and... Not right. People who become turtles. <laughs> right. What does he say? I only, I only raise things I can eat, or I only have pets. Yeah, yeah. just like <laughs> it's like <"Whoa."> ew. Yeah, <laughs> this just you get salmonella. There's from some early turtles. stuff in the, his comments where the camera people are just like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's in this room? But you have to move past it for your personal safety. Like you can't dig into it right. because just your like, safety would be at more. risk. Yeah, exactly. it's like, okay, yeah. that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I think I first saw this on the Sci-Fi Channel. Oh. Uh, overall, I feel like it's pretty interesting idea with a slightly muddled logic, but I do like when the cameras go off and it switches to horror movie mode, if only briefly. There were a lot of people who wanted a sequel to this, although I couldn't see how the bit would be sustained for another movie. Well, you might be in the... Word. Yeah, yeah I agree, yeah, agree with that. Word. You, you could find a way. Um, uh, if this was just the horror movie parts of this and they added on to the, I think this would definitely just be a sci-fi movie. Yeah. <laughs> like if it was just the horror movie and then we backtracked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I like that that was also like how you got movies out back in the day. Yep. The sci-fi channel. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Dog Soldiers was also yeah. like a sci-fi premiere sci-fi. here in the States. Uh, the Descent was also on right. sci-fi a lot. Which Neil, is, yeah. Well, Neil that Marshall's was in channel. Theater. Yeah, <laughs> guess, that one yeah. was in theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Mark Zidane says, I bought this from the PX wall station in Okinawa back in the day <laughs> with zero knowledge of what I was getting into other than the back description. And I was pleasantly surprised with the original self documentary style and overall storyline. And I'm always happy to see Robert England in anything. Only thing I found some of the supporting actors a bit lackluster. Well, yeah, the girl who plays Kelly, I think was like, Oh yeah, they're not good. They're not yeah, like they're not great because they're just regular people off the street. I'm sure, right? right. These are actors not actors that are on their way. Yeah, they don't necessarily for, have to be. You find them in Backpage. And yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, no, they're not. They're not good. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says cardio. cardio. Yes. <laughs> Uh, last week we watched a movie called Witchery. Emma <laughs> Fad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, writes in because we didn't have a mailbag. Right. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. So apparently we have inducted David Hasselhoff wow. Wow. to the sir. Wall of Fame wow. because he was in Witchery. He was also in Star Crash. Remember oh, yep. Star Crash? Yep. And he was in Kung Fury, which, yes, we did Kung Fury, the half hour short. On this show, oh, at yeah. one point. wow, okay, you can go back and listen to our review. All right, how many years uh, back is that? It's a while ago. It's that was one of those like we burned an episode somehow, we lost it. Ah. So we watched Kung Fury, it was half yeah. hour. And yeah. we did an episode. Gotcha. Were you here? <laughs> and I think, no, I missed that one. I think. And I'm kind of There's a great I'm David Hasselhoff song in that movie. Mm. I don't know. I remember. Love it. Uh, uh, Annie Ross is. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say if, if it was if we had instead of the Wall of Fame, if it was the Hall of Fame, but Hoff Hall. The Hall. Fame. Hall. I'm just Hall, Hall, Hall of Fame. The yeah, Hall yeah, there Hall. we go. Okay, I was trying yeah. to get to something. I'm like, there's yeah. something there. Yeah. The Hoff of Fame. <laughs> uh, Annie Ross, who was in that movie last week, is also inducted into the <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame because we watched. Uh, so she was Rose. She was the one who got her mouth sewn shut. Yep. yep. In okay. which. Um, she was the voice of Carolyn Newcliffe in The Beast Must Die. Oh, you remember wow. The Beast okay. Must Die? Yes, I like that. The hunter lot. guy's wife. Okay. Her voice was dubbed by Annie oh, Ross. Weird. That was okay. the werewolf murder mystery yes. movie where it paused and asked you to think about who did it, right? Yeah, the werewolf brain. Oh. Yes, I liked that movie a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she was also, and I should have looked this up because this is significant, she was... 
Robert Vaughn's sister in Superman 3. Hmm. She's the one who gets turned into the robot. Oh, she's the one who gets turned into the robot. Oh, the scariest <laughs> Superman moment ever yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah. Yep. It's terrifying. Yep. Terrifying. Yeah. Uh, I hated that episode, ooh. though. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory Winter wrote in and said, I like this movie, Witchery. You got Hofster being Hofster, <laughs> minus the slow mo, and yeah. Linda Blair wearing the possession like she owns it. It's fun and <laughs> yep. weird with a little Basically taste does. of nasty. Yeah. I mean, all those things are true. Fun Very and true. weird and a little taste of nasty. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> there were some fun moments. People getting stuck to the hell portals was pretty fun. I mean, uh, yeah, the, uh, that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Hell portals were fun. Yeah, yeah. We we established they're few and far between, but, but there are there. moments that yes. are there. funny in that movie. Yes. yes. Well, the week before, we got a full mailbag out of this because people have finally heard our best Uh-oh. or worst. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, like, what do we do? Impact? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nicholas Namington says Godzilla minus one was the best movie in the last decade? Question, Question mark. mark. 20 years? Question mark. I cared about the there. people and feared Godzilla. Impressive accomplishment for the 30 something. 30 something movie. Oh, yeah, oh, there's Godzilla. so many Godzilla movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got to And like this. I said, when you think about our 2014 Godzilla in comparison, oof, it's real embarrassing. Like our 2014 Godzilla with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian uh, Cranston yeah. is bad. I still like that one better than the, everything that's followed in well, the monster Well, Yeah, but, but compared to minus one, you know, it's still a oh, yeah, 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 shit, yeah. you know? Uh, Michael Whitaker says, aside from anything I took my kids to, like Ninja Turtles and Spider Man, I don't know if I've seen any new movies this year. At least ones that weren't ranking. See, that's like the I... best movie I saw this year might be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and that's only because <laughs> I had the time to see it, and it was free. If anything, my favorite thing I saw last year, and that or is that was from uh, last year, and then he says. I can't believe I forgot about Evil Dead Rise. I guess that was the best movie I saw this year, and I got to see it on my birthday, which was a nice bonus. <laughs> Evil nice. Dead Rise. That was Everybody? a nice stream of yeah, conscious we email. We all saw it. I just didn't really care for it, it that great. much. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. Oh. oh this I, is, see, this is, I'm, 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 I think I'm going to start doing a thing where I'm just going to delay my end of year best ofs by a year. So I'm gonna give so you, you all the best stuff, all? right? <laughs> I think I'm catching up on last year, all last year's shit. You could just watch it list. when it comes out. It's not that's possible. an option. I have a problem. That's oh, right. it's a you problem. So work on that. But you know, <laughs> it's hard. Evil it's hard. Dead Rise, like. I'm sorry, the ad I'm campaign just gonna go watch, uh, did not help that movie no. because you could not fucking escape the ad campaign. No. And I'm sorry, the director who every six months or whatever keeps posting a picture with him and the cheese grater on Instagram, that was three seconds of your fucking movie that you cut away from. Give it up. <laughs> the cheese grater was not that significant. Stop acting like Michaela it was a character. Has grievances. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because that, they, the, that was on the poster. That was the mm. commercials. And Sean, it is blink and you miss it scene in the yeah. movie. It, it is, is not. A, it, it is a very forgettable movie. Yeah, it's, I think that's exactly. The, it's just not yeah. offensive. It's, it's just very forgettable. I'll mediocre. just go watch Demons and Two. I, I just yeah, Demons Two is the well. I don't know if that's very good either, but at yeah. least it does. It it's probably a high goes rise. throughout the apartment it instead of just one entire, apartment the whole yeah. fucking movie, and then a parking garage at the end. Yeah, you know? I was disappointed by yeah. that. I mean, it was. I guess it was an okay night out. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's not an offensive year, movie. It's just forgettable. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. all made the mistake of watching Evil Dead 2013 right before we saw that movie. And that yeah. did not yeah. help. Yeah. That yeah. colored our that opinions big yeah. time. So yeah. don't do that. Well, Movie Bacon <laughs> writes in and Ooh, says, Movie Bacon. None of you guys liked Evil Dead Rise? All the major horror names let us down bad, except Evil Dead. I mean, compared to like Scream Six, yeah, it's way better. Yeah. But like, it's still, it's <laughs> well, mess- it didn't feel are. like an Evil Dead movie to me. No, it didn't. I don't want kids in my Evil Dead movies. I'm sorry, I don't oh. get them the fuck out Even of here. Even if they die, yeah, there's three of them in this movie. They Haven't they said that they're gonna like Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi and them? They're like gonna try and do Evil Dead movies every couple of years. I mean, that's fine. Because it's a name yeah. that they got. I think probably they're making tons of money now that the more yeah. than they made yeah. on Ash the older Ash vs. Evil Dead was really good. Yeah, that was I good. really liked Ash yeah. vs. Evil Dead, so. But yeah, licensing all... has just got to be great for them. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be new scenarios with yeah. Deadites. Because like I guess like, that's what they got. They got yeah. Deadites. But like I said, this wasn't an offensive movie. It was just yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I got what I wanted out of the remake. Yeah, yeah exactly. That was much better than it yeah. should have been. And we did an episode on we it. We did. Go, go listen. and listen to our <laughs> review. Uh, Adam Kaler says about the episode, uh, great insight, Freak Show. You always throw some curveballs. Much appreciated. 2023 wasn't great for movies. A lot of two stars out of five. Mm-hmm. My best were Spider-Man, Creed 3, Asteroid City, John Wick 4, and The Holdovers. And the worst was Scream 6, Muppets Take Manhattan. Dishonorable <laughs> mentions. <laughs> 
dishonorable <laughs> mentions, Evil Dead Rise yeah. and The yeah. Boogeyman. I saw The Boogeyman. Yeah. It was bad. I forgot that even came out this I, year. I, I want to see The Holdovers. That looks like He had The Holdovers. I saw The Holdovers. It was good. It almost made my top. Nice. That's a good diverse Asteroid list. Asteroid City, I was disappointed with. It's mm. beautiful, but I was disappointed. Mm. Mm. Uh, Dom Kree says, when I heard you guys talk no. about the animation art on Across the Spider-Verse, I remembered that dude from my high school worked on it. That's yeah, cool. That. That's cool. I love that. Nice. Uh, Joey Blythe says, I don't know if I can keep this short. I agree with <laughs> all of you on all of these that I've seen. I remember Reptile being advertised only for one day on Netflix, yep. and then it was gone, and mm-hmm. I had completely forgotten about it until Holly had it on her list. So thank you. Also, you Thanksgiving, Talk to Me, and Godzilla Minus One weren't even on my radar until New Year's Day. Wow. When I first saw there was going to be a Barbie movie, I thought, why? And as soon as I Same. saw Margot Robbie was attached, I understood. Excellent movie. <laughs> yes. yeah. Across yep. the Spider-Verse. Excellent. Yep. Mutant Mayhem was for the kids yeah. my age as well. Great! I soundtrack. laughed at the trailer for that movie and seriously thought about seeing it because there were some adult jokes in that trailer for that movie it's, that I was like, okay, I, you know. I, my, my kid didn't want to see it, and then I I, I watched it, yeah. and then I, I I looked at him. I'm like, they talk just like you, right? Like maybe that's why you don't want to see this, but it is hilarious. Watching don't want to look movie in that mirror, and huh? Looking at you, <laughs> yeah. You are a Ninja Turtle kid. Yeah. Well, Joey goes a lot of sus getting say, thrown around in that movie. He says, I just watched Gran Turismo on New Year's Day. I didn't understand at first how this was a, based on a true story. If it was based off a game, then I read the story. Excellent. I watched a ton of stand up, and Mike Birbiglia is one of the best. And I also love Nate Barg. Thank you. Gatsi. Nate Bargatze. Yep. Stand up. Nate Bargatze is uh, very funny. He just had one this year on Prime called Hello World. Yep. Mm. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, see, somebody likes stand up. Thank you. Wow. I appreciate that. Thanks, Joy that. Blythe. You really did your homework, yeah. sir. Yeah. Wow. Uh, impressed. Solid that Oaks was writes yeah. in oh. and says, uh, no one will save you as a worst pick is wild. I love that movie. Um, Sean, that is, <laughs> oh, no. the, that is the same person you argued with at my Halloween party about no one will save you. Oh, yeah. That is Stuart oh. writing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so this is an ongoing beef. Oh. Yeah. No, uh, no, I understand that the world loved that movie and that. I did not. And I don't think we were had didn't po- love great that movie. positive feelings towards it. None no, of us I liked it. I didn't like it. No, I didn't. Like, it wasn't, I didn't like it. All, I didn't uh, even see it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kogar 2013 says, I agree with Colin's worst of the year. That was Exorcist, uh, believe <laughs> Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. Glad there someone go. else suffered through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, thank you, each of you, for writing in. I mean, we really appreciate it. Thank you for doing yes, it. Yes, thank you. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of Behind the Mask. Now we got to get our heads back in the mm-hmm. oh, yeah, but, Behind uh, the Mask. Everybody, everybody look at this. See, <coughs> this is where you were. Oh, this is where yeah. you were. Okay. Yes, remember okay. this. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Starting with uh, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? I, I, um, you know, I saw this when it first came out and I don't think I had enough knowledge of mm. slasher movies and tropes to fully appreciate it at the time because mm. I remember just being kind of like shrugging it off me like yeah it's whatever you know that guy was funny but also kind of annoying you know and he's treading that line a lot in sure. this movie um he gives me like weird theater kid energy of like someone I would have gone to high school with that would have <laughs> just like always been disrupting class because they need the attention and that like is a little bit like oh ugh, get away from me and you that, know and like that yeah guy from that class would turn into a serial killer it, yeah. yeah yeah exactly and so but at the same time like like I said I want the Jim Cummings version of this movie which I guess is probably Wolf of Snow Hollow right mm-hmm. yeah. that is the, his version Basically, of this movie yeah. you know um, which I really liked <laughs> that almost made my list that year it came out but it oh, pissed so me off good. a little bit at the end but um. <laughs> It didn't make you list. I thought it. Did. No, it didn't because I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the movie. No, I have it on my list. I can't remember. We talked. It was about on my yeah, list. we talked about it. Yeah, I know it was on. Some yeah, list. It's on my list. But I want okay. Jim Cummings. Yeah, to, I need him to keep that momentum going and do more because I love him. Like he was my favorite part of ha- of Halloween Kills. Like the flashback scenes with him Did were you great. See his, uh, but... The follow up movie. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the beta? racing movie? Beta 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 oh, that beta weird like the beta oh, test. Yeah. yeah, no, I did not. see that. I don't know if he's done anything since, but it was like a build up to. I saw the first one he did. Yeah. The racing one? No, the cop the one. Cop the one. cop yeah, one. Yeah, the cop where he's got like a mustache <laughs> and his wife called? died. And- yeah. I can't oh, remember. Shit. The Jim a- Cummings cop movie, yeah, you yeah. know. Wolf of Snow, Snow Hollow was the better one. very vague. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. The Jim Cummings cop movie with yeah. three of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's yeah. a very good cop. Yeah. He's a good cop in movies. I love it. Um, And this did remind me of, I don't know if you guys have seen Tucker and Dale versus Evil, yeah. mm-hmm. but that is very much like this movie. I feel like this oh, and that yeah. would be a good double feature. Oh, that's a good um, Those kids keep throwing themselves in our uh, wood chipper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. That movie's much more funny, like leans into the comedy even sure, further yeah. than this one, but it's great. Um, and and I think Totally Killer has some of this energy too as well, especially in the third act. Um, I enjoyed it, I but I think 
I'm going to recommend it with the caveat that you have to have an education in slasher film to appreciate it. Mm. I don't know that everyone would appreciate it in the same level if they don't have that. Um, I do see this movie having a huge resurgence, especially with how meta and self-referential it is. I could see it having, I don't know, like a moment, I guess. Stay tuned for the bloody disgusting article next right, week. Yeah. So, you know. um, so yeah, I'm going to recommend series. it, but with the caveat that you have some sort of like horror film 101 education. It will be way more enjoyable and more fu- mm-hmm. funnier, definitely right. funnier if you do. Right. Colin, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you have to know slasher movies to appreciate it, mm-hmm. but if you do know slasher movies, it is... Um, I don't know. It's insightful. It's witty. It's extremely well written. As uh, Sean said, the script is like really good. It's a, a one of those that stands out, you know, uh, among the things that you say uh, that you see. But um, is any of the uh, insights that it has its own, or are they just gleaned from like mm-hmm. you know uh, academic? papers that have been written on the, the slasher movie or books you know that have been written on the slasher movie i don't know but it, i mean it's still cool to see it it did it, to me it reminded me of cabin in the woods and i recommended cabin in the woods to people and they were like that movie sucked and i'm like what oh. and i'm like but you have to i think you have to have a certain love of horror movies like yeah. we're saying with this one you have to understand yeah, what it is that they're deconstructing i guess that is a deconstructionist uh, but like it's called cabin in the woods it's title is a trope like yeah how people don't they know not yeah, know yeah, but yeah. How, how like how do you not it's making it as obvious we as are not normal you, yeah i guess we, i know yeah that's true but so from the 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 era of the postmodern uh, uh horror movie uh the people in it i really liked um i thought the direction see there was i was having some problems toward the end of the movie and um when it would when it would become like a movie movie, yeah, I'm like, there's just something not going on here, and uh, and and I figured out what it was, and I had to look it up like during the the movie, but this was the composer's first movie, mm. and he's since gone on to do like every single Star Wars video game, oh. I think. Uh, so that's where that's his specific. career. Well, I mean, what are you doing? You're re- Are you remixing the John existing Williams. soundtrack? Right, <laughs> like he's not creating anything new for that. Like, um, it it's. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff where I was like looking at scenes. Once I was like, there's something going on here and it's the music and I'm sitting there watching it. I'm like, this scene is edited like it's supposed to, but the music isn't following it like it's supposed to. So there's like as a film composer, I guess you can make a score that sounds like it fits in a movie and he does a lot of, it sounds like Jaws or something. There's a lot of dum 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 dum, you know, but it's not actually scoring the emotional landscape of the movie Mm -hmm. and so i thought it was like actually when you listen to it i think you'd say like it sounds like a movie score but it's a bad score and it actually undercuts the uh impact and the effectiveness of the end of this movie and i think if you rescored it i think you'd have a automatically like a better movie yeah um just by doing that but um, i think it's a i think the horror movie is a bad movie I, th- I, f- I honestly, I'll let you finish, and I'll I'll say it in mine. But well, you're saying in like well, logic said, like, or how it's put was... together or how it's filmed. I mean, it feels low budget. There's a, so, several moments, you know, like even the it's fire cheap, at the end. I'm like, oh, aside that's from the that's the like a real fire, following. not a Hollywood fire. But is that just because we've been conditioned to see things, mm. you know? And you're like, well, it seems less professional than they would have had flame bars and something like. They actually yeah. set a building on fire. Yeah, this right, one yeah, yeah. and waited burned. for the the magic shot. <laughs> right, you know. They, oh, if they'd stayed on long enough, we would have had a roof collapse. It was yeah, like it's going near the end of it. Yeah, there were shots at the end where like. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eventually, it was going. Uh, but even like you know, they weren't. The camera guy wasn't catching. Um, Leslie's body in the press right until like the very end of that scene where he mm-hmm. finally got the angle because she's throwing the 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 gas around yeah. and I'm like is he still there were, yeah. you know because we didn't actually see it but at the end he, you know it's like so little things like that that I'm like okay well it's probably it is I think the guy's first movie mm-hmm. uh, the director so maybe it's the first movie for like a lot of the people involved uh, they had these uh, you know the seasoned actors come in and, and, and do stuff to kind of give it a higher profile. Um, but I think like the script is the best thing about it. Well, is it, 
The the, the performances are like really they're good. Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're great. Those too. two are great. So I think you've got a winner here. I think this is if you're a horror fan of slasher movies, you've probably already seen it. But I mean, I would definitely say you have to see Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're right on. Um, it's it's one of those movies that like change a couple components and it's not going to work. You know, it's I, I think the combination of the which I didn't love the found footage. Not gonna lie, <laughs> we know I can't handle found footage. Right? Um, You're but, saying it was like a queasiness. Yeah, I like, like yeah. I can't watch. Physically, you can't. I, I can't watch it. I get motion sick. This. Um, so I did not know this was found footage. So a lot of those scenes I did have to like look away because it is very jumpy. Um, but the combination of like the found footage and then it becoming like an actual horror or slasher movie. Like it just it works. I think if you take either of the components away and just make it a slasher movie, I agree with Sean. It's not going to be a good movie. Um, but just the way it's orchestrated, it works. And I actually didn't notice the score. Now that you talk about it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. Because it only it doesn't happen yeah. during the found footage part. Yeah. It's only during right. the movie parts. Right. Now that you say it, it's like thinking back at the end, like you're. I think you're right about that. I didn't. Because it's it's not a very noticeable score. No, it made no impression on me. Yeah, it's not very noticeable. Well, there was a scene yeah. that led up to the discovery of a body. Yeah, and it was missed. The music was mistimed. It was just yeah. like, and then there's a body hanging there, and we just keep going. I'm like, that was supposed to be like. I mean, the editor you need, had you cut that, it. Right. You need that to like build crescendo. To the, yeah, the shring shring yeah, or something. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that might be because I was like, there's something off about it, and I think that might have been it. Um, but. Otherwise, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. It was it was a lot of fun. I think the writing is fantastic. I think it's it's really funny. It's um, I, I like that it's a commentary on slasher movies where it points out some things that are ridiculous about the um, about the metaphors of of slasher movies <laughs> um, because people can argue them all day. And I think I think sometimes it's just a slasher movie. I don't think there's. <laughs> There's symbolism Sometimes in everything. We're just killing people. <laughs> Sometimes you're just killing people. Um, so I liked the commentary that it's like, is it or is it, does it have meaning or doesn't it? Um, I, I liked the jokes around that. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Aside from the found footage making me feel sick. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a good time. I would recommend it. I had not watched it or really heard of it. Um, but yeah, it's. I think it's for anyone that likes slasher movies. I would enjoy it. So highly recommend. Sean, take us home. There you go. Um, I mean, like we've all said, I think the, I think the script and the two leads in this, I think they're very good. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, great performances. I think they bring that script to life, and they they do have a very charming, very engaging energy to them in both the roles they play. Um, I, I mean, I believe them. I believe him as a as a charming, happy go lucky serial killer who just wants to share, um, you know, share this with someone, and her as someone. Um, you know, uh, uh, thinking this would be a great opportunity, but not necessarily knowing how far it's going to go until it gets there. I think she, uh, I think he acts it well. She reacts to that very well. Um, I, I mean, the weakest part is when we get later, way later on in the movie is when we get into the actual horror movie, which and I'll say again, if that was just an actual horror movie, uh, it would be a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, and I don't think any of us would watch it and think it was good. Um, well, the stoners are bad too. The stoners were bad. Terrible. Like terrible. All the, the, I mean, the girl, no, they were all, none of these people are high schoolers second of all or third of all. But, um, yeah, I, I think that would be bad. The ending, the kind of the chase scenes, like, yeah, we said it was a little choppy. It's a little long, like, um, uh, looking at it, it, it is overly dramatic in moments, which I, I think is purposeful. I mean, maybe you could take it as in not being and them actually trying to make, you know, that last part, a real horror movie. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I think as a whole, I think, I think it works really well. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. It's a very well-written and funny, um, yeah, it, it, and again, like we said, you, a knowledge of horror movies and slashers will help you uh, enjoy this more. But it is um, maybe just based on the charisma of the two leads alone will will uh, get you through that last half of this. But yeah, I had a really fun time. This is my first time watching it. Um, I'm kind of surprised it's my first time watching it. But again, that's a me problem. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, fun time, real good time. Um, really like this movie. Um, 
I'll give it some time, but I'll watch this again. This was good. I like this. I'm glad I finally got to watch it. So I recommend. Solid listener pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good job, guys. Way to, way to really um, move up from Witchery. <laughs> that fucking movie. You know, uh, just before we're done with this, uh, I I was aware that when we were watching it, the first kill happens about like an hour and 10 minutes into the movie. Right. Yeah. And for being a slasher movie, uh, you know, commentary or analysis or, you know, um, it's also, I think what probably would have helped it out, it would have been, uh, set piece kill scenes, which mm-hmm. it doesn't have. Right. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. they should have hired some guy, like a Savini type guy to come in and do like big, you know, cause that's what it's missing. It yeah, really right. doesn't oh, have yeah. those. Yeah kill scene moments yeah yeah, even I, the, I yeah yeah i don't know well, i was like yeah, I, I don't know if it needs it for the first few because the first few it's still like a behind the scenes thing right yeah but, yeah, maybe yeah. Like but in for, the end that maybe for like the last few yeah, yeah. but yeah there is no like punctuation or accentuate because right. even like uh, uh the i mean it's robert england even his character comes in later on and his sort of stabbing later is it's just sort of it's nothing. like a stage it's moment you know yeah. it's like i felt like i was watching an actor on a stage but i think that about it robert england a lot <laughs> he, has, he has stage actor energy for sure. Yeah, he plays yeah. for the back, yeah. 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 But no, there it is. Yeah. All well, in all, you'll enjoy it. But that is a uh, uh, freak show approved. That's all yes. four of us recommended. Yes. So you're contractually now by listening to the show obligated to watch it, mm-hmm. even though you voted for it and probably have already yeah, watched already it. Right. Right. <laughs> this is more for us. Uh, yeah, you, you get what we're saying. Uh, next week we're watching another movie that's chosen by you. you. Oh shit! What are we doing? Uh, next week we're watching. I haven't even seen this one. Oh, no. Maybe some of you have. I don't know. We're gonna find out. It's called the story of Ricky O. What story That's of number Ricky two? O? What's number two? Yeah, the Google. second most is this voted for movie. The story, the story of, of Ricky. Ricky o? Yeah, Ricky. O. This is like so. This movie. I remember like. I mean, it's been. It's been a while. For what Wait, year? do we need to do we need to save this? Yeah. Okay. Let's All right. Maybe okay. it's a. Uh, I want to say it's a Japanese or Chinese movie. He's like a kung fu fighter. It's very gory. Apparently. Okay. He punches people and they like explode. <laughs> well, say, yeah. say no more. Say no more. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do it. All Until right. Story of Ricky <laughs> yeah. O. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>